Welcome everybody to another edition of Historical Geocaching on the road with Geocacher Tian Photobug from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Today I am so excited. My family and I are heading to Point Park on Lookout Mountain, part of the Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park, our nation's largest and oldest national military park established back in 1890. It's the site of some really major Civil War fighting and battles. I've been there before, but I'm excited to go again, bring you guys along. This time we'll be attending a can cannon firing demonstration, um, a tour of Point Park, who knows what else. Anyway, I'm really excited about this. Come along with me as I visit the National Park in my backyard. So here we are folks at the Point Park Visitor Center. Um, I'm really excited to be here and also because this is a national park, we get to, I get to have my national park passport stamp. So let's go on inside and get my passport stamp for that stamp. There we go, another stamp on the password. I'd like to welcome you to Point Park. And where is uh, everyone visiting us from today? Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta, Chattanooga? The Netherlands. The Netherlands. There we go. All right, you folks in the back? Georgia? 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 Where? Indiana. Okay. Collegedale. Yep. Mm -hmm. Collegedale, Tennessee. Ringgold, Michigan back here? Well, I'm, I'm, I live here. <laughs> okay. Little Rock, Arkansas. All right. Thank you for coming out on this Independence Day. On this day, we have volunteers with us uh, from our National Military Park that have come out to assist us with uh, providing some artillery demonstrations for our visitors today. In the fall of 1863, after the Battle of Chickamauga that was fought September 19th and 20th, uh, Confederates would bring artillery up here onto the top of Lookout Mountain. Now the first artillery to fire actually on the city of Chattanooga in the Chattanooga campaign of the summer and fall of 1863 occurred on August 21st when a Union battery, the 18th Indiana Light Artillery, from hills north of the city across the river fired on the Confederates in Chattanooga. And we have some ladies from Indiana who can probably tell us that that 18th Indiana Light Artillery was com commanded by this young 25-year-old captain by the name of? <laughs> I know you know his name. Sherman. His name is Eli Lilly, the future drug dealer. So with the Confederates now uh, occupying not just Lookout Mountain, Missionary Ridge, first ridge off to the city, off to the east of the city, and Chattanooga Valley, valley between Missionary Ridge and Lookout Mountain, as well as Lookout Valley, the valley to our west. They were trying to bottle up or besiege the Union Army of the Cumberland 
uh, that had withdrawn from Chickamauga back into uh, the city of Chattanooga. Now when those Confederates were bringing up artillery in the fall of 1863, Private Royal Figg of Parker's Virginia Battery said that our eyes were feasted with the sights of the grand and beautiful as we toiled upward, but these scarcely prepared us for the glory of the view from the summit. It seemed almost limitless. In front, to the right, to the left, mountain on mountain loomed tall and blue as far as vision might extend, while the Tennessee River, winding gracefully among them, gleamed out here and there in bright relief. Another Confederate soldier that fall, Clinton Winkler in the 4th Texas Infantry, uh, came up to Lookout Mountain one day with some, some of his comrades and said on Friday last, a party of which I was one obtained permission to visit Lookout Mountain and about noon, the day being beautiful, set out and in the course of an hour had ascended as far as our horses could carry us and dismounting, were climbing up its steep and rugged sides when I disengaged myself from the balance of the party and sat down upon a shelving rock to contemplate the grandest scene my eyes ever beheld. As I gazed in amazement at the scene, I thought of Bascom at the Falls of Niagara. God of grandeur, what a sight! Almost bewildered by the beauty spread out before me. For our visitors today, uh, whose, whose visit to Lookout Mountain is the first time? Okay, quite a few of you. All right, what have you thought of the view? Pretty impressed like these soldiers? And in July, we don't normally have this great of a view. We, we usually have a lot of heat and humidity uh, that kind of puts a lot of uh, haze into our view. But with that cold front the other night, we have been able to see very far. Now, you still can't see seven states, as some might claim. But that claim goes back a long ways. Kate Cumming, a Confederate nurse, that came to Lookout Mountain in May of 1863. Coming to the top of the mountain, she wrote in her diary later that evening that sitting out on the point of, of the rocks, out here on the point of Lookout Mountain, that I was amazed at the scene that I saw and that she said, I am told that on a clear day with a good glass, seven states can be seen from the top of this mountain. So it goes back a long time. Uh, the claim to be able to see seven states. So what we're going to do is have our volunteers demonstrate for you the loading and firing of the gun and then after that we'll talk more about artillery up here in the fall of 1863 uh, to find out if the artillery was as impressive as the view that these soldiers were getting in the fall of 1863. They got her. You may exercise your detachment in the School of the Peace and expend one blank round. Yeah, He's called for the exploding ordnance shell. Now what I have in my hands is shell ammunition for a 12-pounder Napoleon. Uh, for a rifled gun like the three-inch ordnance gun that we are firing, it would be bullet shaped. Uh, this would be for the guns like you see down here over to your right and behind you on the other side of the New York Peace Monument for the 12-pound Napoleon cannon. As the name implies, it's hollow on the inside. This would be filled with black powder. I believe uh, he said for the fuse to be cut to two seconds. A fuse would be cut two seconds inserted here at the top so that hopefully two seconds after that gun fires this is going to explode over its intended target. So when this explodes this is going to break up into fragments onto uh, its target below. Anyone know who the inventor was of such ammunition? A German by the name of Henry Shrapnel. Huh. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay, I want you to keep in mind 
that was about half the powder charge of what would actually be used in the rounds uh, during the Civil War. And they are only firing black powder, no ammunition with that. So imagine with twice the powder and ammunition how much noise that's going to make. And also the gun would recoil, meaning that the wheels uh, would have rolled back as well. Now as we talked a few minutes ago about the uh, impressiveness that these Confederate soldiers had of the view from up here on the top of Lookout Mountain. But I pose the question, would the artillery up here be as impressive in the fall of 1863 as the views that these soldiers were getting from the top of the mountain? Private Elisha, <coughs> excuse me, Sergeant Joseph Gibson in the 78th Pennsylvania Infantry who is down near the city of Chattanooga, said that the Confederates planted their batteries along the side of Lookout Mountain, bringing two heavy guns to the point of the mountain. These two 84-pounders, as we called them, very soon came to be a matter of curiosity rather than apprehension, for they scarcely interfered with our work as we fortified the place. 78th Pennsylvania helped to build what afterwards came to be known as Fort Negley, which soon grew to be one of the strongest forts on the right wing of the army. During all this time, the Confederate artillery threw shells into our camp, but did very little damage. And we came to regard their firing on us from the point of Lookout Mountain and elsewhere as a matter of interest and amusement rather than alarm and danger. Field artillery for the Civil War was designed for mainly flat or slightly elevated ground not really for ground, that is 1,400 feet above your intended targets in the valley below. A certain law by the name of gravity is going to take effect here. And so the Confederates firing from up here may reach the tip of Moccasin Point, the peninsula across the river from us, but not very much farther than that. The idea was to plant artillery up here to try to guard the river and the valleys, particularly Lookout Valley, from being used uh, to bring supplies into the Union Army besieged in Chattanooga from their forward uh, supply depots in Northeast Alabama at Bridgeport and Stevenson. 